Well, you look bundled up. What? It got all the way down to the 50s last night? <laughs> Brother, if you want to stay warm, you got to have some meat on your bones. Uh, on you, pretty much any meat would be an improvement. Ooh, was that skeletophobic of me? Uh, if so, I apologize. Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 600 posts, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my lovely wife, Nurse Amy, I am the author of the Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, uh, the Ebola Survival Handbook also, and co-designer of the new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival. A great gift for Christmas, birthdays, or anytime you want to get the family together and have some fun. We're making a move, but we're going to be back in the old hospital tent with T.D. Bird over here and this guy very, very soon. Now, it looks like another harsh winter and cold weather preparedness is a must for survival. Failure to take precautions can lead to a condition called hypothermia. Hypothermia occurs when the core body temperature drops below 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in your efforts to be medically self-reliant, one of the major factors that must be taken into consideration is your environment. If you haven't prepared for the weather, you have made your environment your enemy. And believe me, it is a formidable one. Therefore, it's important to be prepared to prevent death from exposure and to know how to treat someone who is hypothermic. Your body has various methods that it uses to control its internal core temperature, either raising it or lowering it to appropriate levels. The body core refers to the major internal organ systems that are necessary to maintain life, including your brain, heart, and liver. Now, in cold weather, your blood vessels constrict to conserve heat. Muscles shiver as a method of heat production. Now, you can voluntarily increase heat by exertion. It's recommended as you probably have read, to keep moving in cold environments for this reason. Now, part of the healthcare provider's role is to monitor weather conditions as well as the people you're sending out in the cold. Make sure that you are keeping a close eye on that. Now, aside from shivering, the most noticeable symptoms of hypothermia will be related to mental status. The person may appear confused, uncoordinated, lethargic as the condition worsens, speech may become slurred, uh, a hypothermic patient may appear apathetic and uninterested in helping themselves to get out of the cold, or may even fall asleep. This occurs due to the effect of cooling temperatures on the brain. The colder the body core gets, the slower the brain works. Now, to prevent hypothermia, you must not only anticipate the temperature, wind, and rain conditions that you'll be traveling through, but you must be physically fit enough for the challenge. Travel with a partner, if at all possible, and have enough food, water, and extra clothing. Remember the simple acronym COLD, C-O-L-D. This stands for cover, C, overexertion, O, layering, L, and dry, D. Cover, protect your head by wearing a hat. This will prevent body heat from escaping from your head. Now, instead of using gloves to cover your hands, use mittens. Mittens are more helpful than gloves because they keep your fingers in contact with each other, and this conserves heat. Overexertion. Avoid activities that cause you to sweat a lot. Cold weather causes you to lose body heat quickly, and wet, sweaty clothing accelerates the process. Rest when necessary. Use rest periods to self-assess for cold-related changes. Layering is L. Loose-fitting, lightweight clothing and layers insulate you well. Use clothing that's made from tightly woven water-repellent material for protection against the wind. Wool or silk inner layers hold body heat better than cotton does. Some synthetic materials like Gore-Tex work, work well also. Especially cover the head, neck, hands, and feet. D, dry. Keep as dry as you can. Get out of wet clothing as soon as possible. It's very easy for snow to get into gloves and boots, so pay particular attention to hands and feet, as we mentioned earlier. Now, any unconscious person that you encounter in a cold environment is hypothermic until proven otherwise. Immediate action is going to have to be taken to reverse the ill effects. Important measures to take are 
Get the person out of the cold and into a warm, dry location. If you're unable to move the person out of the cold, shield him or her from the cold, especially the ground and wind, as much as possible. If the person is wearing wet clothing, remove them gently. Cover the victim with layers of dry blankets, including the head, leaving the face clear. Now, if you're outside, cover the ground and eliminate exposure to the cold surface, as we mentioned earlier. Monitor breathing. A person with severe hypothermia may be unconscious. Verify that the patient is breathing and check for a pulse. You may have to begin CPR. Share body heat. To warm the person's body, remove your clothing, lie next to the person making skin-to-skin -skin contact. Then cover both of your bodies with blankets. Now some people may cringe at this notion, but it's important to remember that you're trying to save a life. Gentle massage or rubbing may be helpful, but too vigorous and you're going to traumatize the victim. Give warm oral fluids. If the affected person is alert and able to swallow, provide a warm, non-alcoholic, non-caffeinated beverage to help warm the body. Now, alcohol does not warm you up. It may give you a warm and fuzzy feeling, but it also expands blood vessels, which causes heat loss. Use warm, dry compresses. A warm first aid compress that activates when squeezed or a makeshift compress of warm, not hot water, in a plastic bottle may help. Apply compresses to the neck, chest wall, armpit, or groin. These areas will get heat to the body core much better than putting warm compresses on the extremities, which sometimes worsens the condition. Avoid direct heat. Don't use hot water, a heating pad, a heating lamp to warm the person. The extreme heat can damage the skin and even cause strain on the heart. Don't rub on extremities that may be frostbitten. As the skin is already traumatized, the condition may be worsened. We'll talk about that another time. If left untreated, hypothermia leads to complete failure of various organ systems and to death. Make sure your people are well clothed for the temperature and monitor them closely if they're outside for extended periods of time in cold weather. This is Joe Halton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching.